According to the German government's own website, Jakub Maria Miashad has been a sitting politician since 1979. Using Google Maps, you can find the English town of Argleton. And several musical encyclopedias include the Zhuang, a type of Maori drum first unearthed in 1903. And none of these things exist. Copyright traps started appearing in encyclopedias in the late 1800s. The idea is simple, a small detail invented to catch someone who would try to copy your encyclopedia and sell it as their own. Do you uh, currently own a set of encyclopedias? No, no, but uh, try the classifieds. People sell everything in there. Appleton's Cyclopedia of American Biography, first published in 1887, contained over 200 fictitious entries for everything from European botanists to Jesuit priests. A bit too much, perhaps. Don't think about it too much, too much, too much, too much. Publishers became a bit more subtle by the 1900s, and as a result, these entries became harder to spot. I mean, why would a music lover's encyclopedia from 1903 just invent a Maori drum? Zhuangzi, <laughs> despite not existing at all, continues to pop up every now and then as a fun and unpronounceable word. As recently as 2005, it was published as being real. It's not. Perhaps the baddest ass fictitious entry is the Trap Street. Because what's cooler than a map with a street that doesn't exist? <laughs> trap Streets have a great name. They sound like streets you would rap on. La Taza Drive in Upland, California used to appear on Rand McNally maps until the 1980s. The geographer's A to Z map atlas included a Bartlett Place that does not exist. And what do you get when you put a whole bunch of trap streets together? A paper town. Brilliance Audio presents the unabridged recording of Paper Towns by John Green. You're watching a YouTube video right now, so there's a good chance you're familiar with the most infamous paper town, Aglo, New York. It's the one featured in John Green's book, Paper Towns. But there's also Goblu and Bidosu, created by a Michigan cartographer who loved University of Michigan football, Go Blue, and hated their rival, Ohio State University, beat OSU. Gonna throw, it's two. As fun as all these fictitious entries are, they're supposed to serve a purpose. They're copyright traps. And yet, as far as I can tell, they've only resulted in a single copyright lawsuit, and it was about a phone book. A small Kansan phone company sued Feist Communications when they included several of their trap numbers in a new phone book. The Supreme Court ruled that that information was not protected by copyright law. So the first time a copyright trap was used in court, it was deemed no. Same with a later decision about a paper town, which means that copyright traps in and of themselves are not copyrightable. Useful. And yet Google still has Argleton, a town that doesn't exist and appeared in maps until 2009. And Germany has this fake politician that they keep insisting is real. Since he was called by telephone to report here and there, the matter made it into the papers, saying that Jakob Mierscheid, a new MP, was engaging in his first activities. Jakob Maria Mierscheid was supposedly invented in the 20s to avoid paying restaurant bills. But today, he has a biography on the German government's website and is on Twitter. Although no one's actually ever seen him, his presence is felt more strongly than most. He twitters and blogs, although he's otherwise very media shy. Miashed kind of cuts to the heart of the fictitious entry. The copyright trap is a nice excuse, but mostly this is a way for people to amuse themselves. Go blue, probably not an earnest attempt to make sure that no one copies your map of the Midwest. But then there is the canary trap. 
Not a rap thing, but here's Gucci for the transition anyway. This one works. If you're worried about leaks in your organization or your government, you make sure that every single person gets a slightly altered version of highly sensitive documents. That way, if things prove leaky, you can easily trace the source. The NBA uses canary traps, and so does Tesla and Trent Reznor and Jack Ryan in Patriot Games because the term canary trap was literally invented by Tom Clancy. Based on the best-selling novel comes the summer's most explosive motion picture. Thanks for everything, Harrison Ford and Alec Baldwin, Ben Affleck, and Chris Pine. What do you think? Do trap streets and paper towns serve any purpose beyond amusing their creators? What's your favorite famous fictitious entry? Let us know what you think in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of This Exists every week. Be excellent to each other. A long, long time ago, we started discussing the idea of doing a book club uh, around cool ideas and the sort of stuff that we talk about on this show. So if you're interested in that, uh, join the This Exists subreddit, r slash woe this exists, and we'll kickstart a discussion, try to pick a book, and then engage in a cool conversation about what wicked smart people we all are forever. <laughs>